What must we do to be considered original? To what lengths must we go to to construct pure authenticity? How do we innovate if the space for innovation is slipping through our fingers? This is what literary critic Harold Bloom referred to as the anxiety of influence. If creating original content isn't always a viable option, we must turn to developing and evolving ideas which came before. That is to create originality out of something that already exists. This is what is known as intertextuality, an embodiment of the paradox of wanting to create something which people can understand, whilst at the same time wanting to create something original. Bloom notes that artists need to willfully misinterpret their predecessor's work and use that misreading to create something original. Intertextuality is a living example of how language works. It is constantly shaped by our previous understanding of it. Intertextuality was essentially born out of post-structuralism, an approach which regards things to being interpreted as connected significations rather than pointing to one particular truth. We understand symbols through their conventions, which appears to hold more power of the language which constructs it, or, as Ferdinand de Saussure puts it, the arbitrary nature of the sign makes all the linguistics of language. Many examples of contemporary film writing rise on the concept that, oh, this film will be successful because it's adapting that game that you love, or that you get to see Batman and Superman in the same film. People came to the agreement that simply having these characters fight each other, especially in Batman vs Superman, directed by Zack Snyder, is no substitute for strong intellectual writing. Intertextuality has become a genre itself. Take the Lego movie for instance. Excellent writing, original characters and plot development. In an increasingly more inherent way, Hollywood attempts to resonate this ideology in film and television, to use the symbol to tie texts together. Stranger Things is essentially driven through pastiche, an aesthetic fashion of emulating another time of writing, so uses intertextuality across genres, incorporating horror, fantasy, romance, drama, sci-fi and action. This series successfully creates a show utilising complete hybridity. However, it's the decision to place all the happenings in the 1980s which resonates this idea so well. With the increasing trend the 80s has on popular culture, including fashion, gaming and artistry, it comes as no surprise that the series fits firmly into that trend. As we watch the action unfold, some more critical viewers have pointed out the strong resemblance the overall aesthetic holds towards the novels of Stephen King, Spielberg's E.T. and The Goonies. Why did Stranger Things feel so original, yet relied on intertextuality to deliver it? Stranger Things, and like a lot of examples of Hollywood filmmaking, does not utilise intertextual references as a substitute for strong writing. They complement each other. It is these references which inform the narrative rather than hinder it. Despite Eleven's constant connective referencing between her and E.T., or Joyce's link to characters in Poltergeist through communicating through the lights, the writing is entirely original. However, uses this intertextuality to guide the viewer through the action. They allude to the significations of piloting childhood with the aid of pop culture references. Their use of 80s technology, Star Wars and Lord of the Rings references the habit. are modest, which links to the intention. Writers and directors, the Duffer Brothers, don't attempt to sell the series based on this. The inclusion is a navigational aid. Season 1 is essentially a complex metaphor of a game of Dungeons and Dragons, so in this sense, they understand their lives and tackle their problems in a similar way to how we understand the series. This is a prime example to why intertextuality has the potential to provide a creative outlook for deep and meaningful writing. A series which embodies 80s culture and utilises intertextuality through many different methods is, as I would argue, successfully original, as shown through hundreds of nominations and awards won in their name. Can we create originality and innovation with the help of intertextuality? I think so. Intertextuality holds potential to solve the anxiety in hand, and I believe Stranger Things communicates the solution in a strong and effective way.